Hey, Austin Norris here. This video is going to be part one of a two-part series on a series of exercises to combat irritation of the hip and low back due to prolonged sitting. The first part will be a series of stretches and the second part will be a series of strengthening exercises. In this stretch part of this series, we're going to go through three exercises. The iliacus myofascial stretch, the hip external rotation aldoa, and the L5 S1 aldoa. The iliacus is a muscle that tends to become very tight from prolonged sitting. It's a very powerful hip flexor. And unfortunately, it has a tendency to inhibit the function of the lower abdominals, which stabilize the pelvis and low back, uh, the glute max, which drives hip extension, as well as the glute med, providing stability to the lateral hip. The iliacus myofascial stretch is gonna to help to open up the fascia and the muscle in this region to help improve function of those posterior hip muscles. The second exercise, the hip external rotation aldoa, is specifically designed to decompress the hip with external rotation. Now, flexion, adduction, and internal rotation is the position that we tend to be in when we're sitting. Unfortunately, this has a tendency to compress the hip and start to throw the hip capsule out of balance. So the hip aldoa is gonna to help to open up all that tension through the front of the hip, build some strength in the back of the hip, while at the same time, start to create joint space so there's more freedom of movement. Our third exercise, the L5S1 aldoa, is specifically designed to decompress the bottom of the low back where it meets the sacrum. Now this is the area that tends to be a common, uh, most commonly herniated uh, for low back injuries. So it's a great exercise to prevent low back injury, but it's also a great exercise to help to relieve low back tension, which is often caused by prolonged sitting. So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, for the iliacus myofascial stretch, we're gonna start off in a half kneeling position. We're gonna be working on stretching the back leg. Now, when possible, I like to use a cushion or a pad underneath the knee as to not irritate the knee or its surrounding bursa. So, from this position, I'm then gonna take the back leg, I'm gonna externally rotate until my heel lines up with the midline of my body there. Now, from this position, I'm going to focus on pulling the pubic bone up towards the bottom of the rib cage. As I do this, I'm creating length in, uh, in the low back as well as in the hip flexor here. Now from this position, I'm going to take one hand to the low back. I want to make sure that it stays flat, that it doesn't start to arch as I slowly start to sink forward going into hip extension. As I'm doing this, I'm focusing on keeping the core tight, keeping the glutes tight, and only going as far as I can manage without feeling that low back arch. Once I've found that position, I'm going to lock in the core and the glutes. I'm going to try and create space between the pelvis and the rib cage as tall as I can here. If you're familiar with Lemma Scaphim Aldoa, you can do that. And then from here, I'm going to reach both arms forward without rounding the upper back, perform wrist extension, external rotation, and then slowly rotate over towards the side, deepening the stretch in the back hip, holding that for one minute on both sides. Once you've performed the iliacus myofascial stretch for one minute on both sides, we're going to move into our hip aldoa with external rotation. Again, we're going to find ourselves in this half kneeling position, except this time we're going to be working the front leg, not the back leg. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my hands, place them to the top of my pelvis. I'm going to make sure that they don't hike. I'm going to make sure that they don't rotate. Now that it's squared, I'm going to start to heel toe, heel toe my leg out to the side, keeping my heel directly underneath the knee. And I'm going to go as far as I can manage, again, without that pelvis moving. From this position, we're going to create counter tension to decompress the hip. To do that, without anything movement, I'm going to pull the heel in towards me, counter that by pushing the knee forward, and counter that by reaching the pelvis down towards the ground. Pulling in, pushing out, pulling in. They all counter each other, creating tension through the hip. Now from here, we're going to add that element of external rotation. To do that, I like to think about pushing in through the big toe, or the base of the big toe, the knuckle there, and then counter that by rolling the upper leg bone back and pushing the knee back. Now, if you do this, you're going to feel the pelvis wants to move back. I'm not going to allow that to happen, so I'm also going to use the strength of the obliques to think about pushing this pelvis forward. Again, 
in, out, in. From this position, I start to feel this binding in the groin through the hamstring here. That's that traction creating and starting to create itself in the hip. From here, we're gonna, again, lengthen the spine. Let me scat if you know how to do that. Reach both arms forward, wrist extension, external rotation. And now the opposite arm is gonna reach up. Now, as this is reaching up overhead, this pelvis is continuing to think about reaching down. I'm reaching through the front arm just as much as I'm reaching through the top arm, holding this position for one minute on both sides. Now that we've performed the hip elbow with the external rotation on both sides, we're going to move into our last exercise in the series, the L5S1 elbow. For this exercise, you're going to find some wall space and place a yoga mat by the wall. From here, we're going to go into this uh, sideline fetal position, and I'm basically going to bring my butt right to the end of the wall and be a little bit off center from the mat, so that from this position, I can then rotate like this, finding my feet up on the wall. Now, if you have a lot of hamstring flexibility, you're going to be able to gain, bring your butt right to the wall while keeping the knees locked and the sacrum, which is the point that's underneath the low back where the pelvis connects to, flat on the ground. If your hamstrings are tight, which they are for many people, you're just going to inch back a little bit until you find yourself in a position where you can keep the knees locked, and keep the sacrum pressed into the ground at the same time. Now from here, we're going to lock the sacrum into place so that we have a fixed point to create traction from. To do that, we have the knees locked, we pull the toes down towards you, you're going to roll the legs in so the knees are starting to point towards each other. From here, we're going to create our first little bit of counter tension. We're going to think about reaching up to the heels of the feet, and countering that by pressing the sacrum into the ground. Once you've done that, you're going to reach your arms up over the shoulders, really reaching as hard as you can, binding myofascial tension into the upper body. Perform wrist extension and external rotation. Now from here, I'm going to tuck the chin into the throat, try to get the neck to touch the ground, and I'm going to look down between my knees, and at the same time try to lift the eyebrows up. This counter tension of looking down between the knees and lifting the eyebrows up stretches the dura mater, protective sheath running along the spinal cord connecting into the front of the cranium. Now, from here, I'm going to very slowly start to reach the arms back, reaching as hard as I possibly can. I'm reaching so hard, I'm pulling the arms off the shoulder blades, the shoulder blades off the ribcage, the ribcage off the pelvis, thus creating length in the lumbar spine. We're going to hold this position for one minute, working as hard as you possibly can while maintaining steady breathing. So apparently I'm losing my hair. <laughs> Anyways, that concludes uh, part one of this two-part series on uh, hip and low back related to prolonged sitting. I'll be releasing the second series probably next week for my Patreon account. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, please do check it out, uh, patreon.com slash primalmotion. Over there, I am posting up uh, weekly recordings of my Aldoa and Calcinex live stream classes that I do every week. I'm also hosting um, tutorials like this uh, for rehab, for posture, but also for physical conditioning and some strength training. I'll be getting to some of that stuff as well. Uh, I'll also be hosting up Q&A sessions uh, twice a month. So I'm doing like a 30 minute uh, like Zoom live stream where my patrons can come on in and ask me any questions they have about rehab, about fitness, about circus, whatever it may be. And then, yeah, I'm also going to try and put up some circus content. Uh, I've been dabbling in circus for the last year or so. And, uh, you know, it's kind of taken over my life very quickly. So I'd like to start to drip some of that content into there as well. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. I know this one was uh, quite long. I'm very new to this filming thing. So, uh, but very determined to adapt to everything that's going on with COVID-19. Uh, but I do appreciate your feedback, uh, whether it's regarding uh, filming stuff or content that you would like to see. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. So send me a message if you know how to do that or send me an email at austin at primalmotion.com. And until next time, thank you.